clicked. There we go. Let me go ahead and lead us in prayer here and we ask the Lord to watch over all that concerns us. Oh, Father, it is good to come together and be able to share uh, through the uh, technologies that we work with here. We just ask you, Father, to uh, let these technologies work well. And most of all, of course, Father, we just want to pray that everything will be done according to your will, for your honor, your glory, in a way that pleases you. You know the work that we're each doing in, in different parts of the world, and uh, we thank you for where you've placed us. And we just look to you to uh, work through us, give us this wisdom, the perspective, the, uh, uh, the protection, the resources, the, all that we need, Father, just to do your work and do it your way. Pray uh, your blessing on our brother Courtney and just pray that you'll give him peace as he uh, leads us through this time today. And uh, thank you for the work that uh, Mary's been doing and uh, others that have worked with here with, with, with Courtney, Lord. And, uh, we just, again, want to just praise you and thank you. It's, it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. What we're going to do, is Lester on here yet? I don't think he's on the call. Let me just, let me, let me email him quickly just to okay. make sure he's around. He received the email, correct? That's what I want to make sure okay. <laughs> that he did. No, well, you're, you're yes, he did. he did, he did, he did. Oh, he did, okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where did my email go? There we go. Okay, then we'll see if he answers me here. Okay, well, let me just kind of go over the ground rules while we're waiting for Dr. Dr. Hurst to come online. We'll see if he gets here. We're going to spend probably you know 15 or 20 minutes to let you, Courtney, give us a your PowerPoint presentation and a review the the work you've done. Uh, then we'll move into a, a discussion time where we can ask questions. Uh, we can all just bring up you know points of interest, or whatever we'd like to do during that time. Then after we've done uh, that discussion segment, we will uh, dismiss you from the. Uh, session just for maybe 15 or 20 minutes where we have to do a, a formal evaluation session and then we fill out a, an oral review evaluation form online. Once we've done that, we will uh, bring you back into the session uh, and announce the results. So we, you know, we, I always like people to realize that when we go through an oral review, hopefully there shouldn't be any surprises <laughs> because we've all looked at this document, we've given feedback, uh, you've done revisions. So uh, we really want this, be, I mean, we, we will have, we may have some recommendations and that's, that's, that's fine, you know, but there shouldn't be any big surprises, okay? We mainly want to go through a time of celebrating with you uh, just the work you've done at BGU over the years and uh, 
brought you to this point in time uh, to be able to uh, be a candidate for, for the doctoral degree. So, all right. Well, I'm hoping Les gets in here. I think we're going to go ahead and start because of time. I like to keep track of time. And Les can join us as he jumps in. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. Mary? I always use informality. And I, I know in academia, I'm supposed to address everyone as Dr. So-and-so. And so Dr. Dr. Glenn, <laughs> and Dr. Horst. Uh, I'm not a formal kind of guy, but uh, okay. when, when we used to go to accreditation conferences, it just took all I had just to be able to address each person as Dr. So-and-so. <laughs> but, but I understand, you know, we've all worked hard at our degrees and, and as, you know, as a, uh, as a, what's the word I love, a gesture of honor. Yeah, yeah. It's good to, it's good to uh, give that salutation. And we'll be able to address you in that same way soon. Uh, Courtney. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and have you start, Courtney. And why don't you go ahead and work, work your way through the presentation and we'll be listening and taking notes. Okay. Well, uh, let me say morning or good afternoon, depending on the time zone that we're on. I must register humbled and grateful I am to God for reaching this milestone in my academic journey and to share my research findings on the topic, a holistic assessment of the chaplain services branch of the JCF, transformation for greater relevance in the 21st century. The presentation will have eight R's, the recognition, the restriction, or red tape, the rational, the research, the results, the recommendations, the reflection, the readiness, and the wrap. Recognition. To my father, retired, retired Sergeant Leroy Faulkner, who served as a law enforcement officer for 37 years, from 1964 to 2001 with dignity and pride, from whom since a child I have learned so much about the culture, structure, and politics of the JCF. To my wife, Suzette, and daughter, Courtney, for the immeasurable love, patience, and prayers. And she's, uh, I believe that she's on. Uh, to my PLC members, um, Karine and Carlos Applewhite, who are both with me, and to my supervisor, Professor Mary Glenn, the number one supervisor in the world for involved guidance and knowledge and experience. Thank you, Professor Mary Glenn. Uh, let me give some restrictions, or I call the, the red tape. Due to the complex nature of the JCF, decisions for changes or implementation are not easy or an overnight journey. The strategies proposed will have to go through several chains of command for both liberation and decision, and will therefore not be executed until post-doctoral studies. And I'll shed some more light on that. What's the rationale? Let me first establish the research question that guided the, the thesis. In what ways can the chaplaincy programs in the JCF have relevance, impact, to be instruments of transformation in the 21st century? And there are four sub-questions. One, what is the relevance and to what extent is the CSB of the JCF meeting the needs of its clients of the 21st century? What training strategies and operational systems can be implemented by the CSB branch, by the CSB of the JCF for it to be revolutionized to have greater relevance in the 21st century? What changes should be made to the staff and offices of the CSB for it to have greater relevance to the client? What are the theological and psychological weaknesses of the CSB? And how may it be strengthened and restored? The rationale. What are the project issues? Uh, let us first look at the CSB. Confidentiality and trust. Adoption of best practices to drive efficiency. Um, for the JCF, they are inadequate resources on the staffing, harsh, unforgiving balance subculture, and poor conditions, long working hours. And let me capture something which is very important um, in our local print media, the Star, dated October 10, 2019. It's said that 30 cops have died since January. And the Police Federation, which is the union group that deals with the welfare of the members, says that this may be linked to working conditions and stress. And uh, you are seeing a photograph of one of the recent funerals that we had, um, so unfortunate. 
Therefore, the rationale, the project intent. The purpose of the research is to one, provide information to reach conclusions helpful toward restoring trust and confidence in the chaplaincy, which will proactively and purposefully integrate the chaplaincy services into policing. Two, provide a comprehensive revision of the chaplaincy programs, conduciveness of plans or offices for counseling, training of staff, person at all levels, and the operational systems. And three, to assist in restoration and strengthening of the theological and psychological framework foundation of the chaplaincy to meet the needs of the 21st century and beyond. The research. The historical context. In 1655, the institution of parish constable was brought to Jamaica by the English colonists after they captured Jamaica. In 1716, the use of law enforcement in Jamaica expanded when night watchmen were appointed to serve the cities of Port Royal Kingston and the parishes of St. Catherine and St. Andrew. In 1955, the, CS, the chaplaincy services branch of the JCF was established with the appointment of Reverend Hugh Smythe as a volunteer chaplain to the JCF. In 1991, Reverend Dr. Vivian Panton was appointed full-time chaplain to the police. Shortly after his appointment, four part-time assistant chaplains were appointed. In 1994, the part-time program was phased out and replaced by four full-time assistant chaplains. In 1999, an additional assistant chaplain was appointed, and that, was, that is yours truly, was appointed, which made provision for all geographical areas to be supplied exclusively with a chaplain. My audience. The audience for this thesis um, is the JCF High Command, the chaplains, volunteer chaplains, peer counselors, and the human human resource arm of the, and the general staff. And you'll see a, a pictorial of the different groupings um, as it relates to the audience. The research methodologies. Right, the, the use of surveys, um, well, the methodologies was qualitative and quantitative survey methods. The use of surveys, uh, focus group, focus questionnaires in this research allowed for insights to be collected and analyzed for, um, from 137 persons with varying interactions to the CSB. Let us now look at the distribution, general distribution of the survey participants and also the use of awareness of the CSB. For the male, there are 69 male and there are 54 uh, females. For the use of the chaplaincy, 57 said yes and 66 said no. For the awareness of the CSB, 121 said yes, and the two said no, which is overwhelming as it relates to its awareness. We'll speak more to that. The executive questionnaires. Group two of the research focused on key executives within the JCF. Through open-ended questions, six persons from the Human Resource Division, Police Officers Association, Operations Branch, Medical Services Branch, and the Jamaica Police Federation were identified. And again, here you find photographs of the different personnel who heads each department. Did something happen? I can't hear you, Bill. Yeah, I think we lost Courtney's computer. Okay. Let's see if he comes back on. Okay. I thought we were supposed to pause and read all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the titles. <laughs> right, right. Oh, wait. Uh, sorry, Doc. No, it's okay. Internet, internet giving some problems here, so right. yeah. Let me just get back the presentation. Just one okay. second, please. <clears throat> Thank you. 
All right, I'm, I'm back now. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, all right. So I'll pick up where, where I left off. All right. Although we're having so a little we'll problem with your audio. Focus room. Okay, um, any better? We're good. We're, we're good now, yeah. Okay, all right. Just let me know whenever you have any, any challenge. Sir. Okay. Uh, five volunteer chaplains and three peer counselors. The level of experience in the focus group range from hmm. Yeah, you're cutting out on us again. in chaplaincy of the day yeah, we're, we're, you're still cutting out on us are you having trouble hearing him too mary i am i'm only hearing like a little okay. bit here and there we may be having a bandwidth problem sometimes if you don't have enough um courtney how about if you try taking off your photo um you're so you're just sharing your screen that may um, lessen some of the demand on the internet. The other possibility would I could go ahead and bring the PowerPoint on to the screen and share, and you could just do an audio. And let, let's see how, how that works. Yeah, I'm trying to. No, I can see if I can do that too. Hold on a second. Okay. Well, if you can do that, Mary, that'd be great. And I'll keep taking notes here. Okay, can you all see that? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let's let's go with that plan, Courtney. If you can just kind of tell Dr. Glenn when to change the slide and you can uh, narrate it for us. I think we left off here. Okay. Are you still with us, Courtney? I see that your microphone is on mute. Okay. There we right. go. If you could go some, if you could take it some more, um, Dr. Mary. If, um, yeah, they're done this Next one. Next one. Freeze again. Okay. All right. Oh, a little bit more. All right. This is where my drive. I was this is going to the camera a little bit. Oh, I'm can do All right. Can, can you all hear me? Uh, yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Are you hearing us? Oh, oh okay. 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 All right. Yes, I'm hearing you now, Doc. Okay, good. Yeah. Right, all right. So this is a, a table showing the gathering, some of the data gathering methods. As I said, the method includes survey, open-ended questionnaire, 
and focus group, the profile, uh, rank yeah. and file members, um, Professor Ray. Yeah. They, uh, we peer counselors and chaplains. The rationale for each are outlined, relevance, improvement of staff. Um, for the other two, you have the surgical setup approaches. The sample method include random sample, um, purpose sample, and convenient sample. And the data analysis, um, SPSS, Microsoft Excel, and the content analysis of the recorded session as it relates to the focus group. Next slide, please. Right, the findings analysis. The key theme from the findings include uh, relevance, professionalism, and awareness, measures to improve the CSB, and pastoral care. Next. Next one uh, on professionalism and awareness. Next. No, let's take me down one, one, down, one, one slide down or up. My pass right here. Yeah, come. Beautiful, right. As it relates to professionalism and awareness, in the response to the awareness of the CSB, 121 of 123 police personnel responded in the affirmative. When asked how were they made aware of the responses, as follows 108 responses were received and, and varied with, lead, with the leading response being association interaction with the chaplains, 25.9%, peer counselors, 15.7%. Through the force orders, which is a gazetted document used to update our rank and file and officers as it relates to. And decisions and 14.8% came from. Can I make a recommendation? Are, are there multiple people in the room with you? Because that might be draining the internet because I'm only getting every other word. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Off again. I'm having the uh, same problem. I'm gonna close my internet. Okay, all right. All right, all right, they're off. So you can proceed up. All right, let, let's look at closer, some closer and critical question and responses. Right, what measures can you suggest for the chaplain services branch to improve its service delivery? Uh, open, open offices on weekend issues, um, issue motivational cards, be more participatory, involved in activities, be proactive, um, do research on factors influencing members, be mindful and important of dealing with mindfulness, important of dealing with customers, change of leadership, and also improve confidentiality. Next. And this question, um, what measures can be taken to improve the effectiveness to meet, uh, of the CSB to meet the needs of the modern um, JCF? Training of peer counselors in intervention techniques, sanitizing members on the work of the CSB to be taken seriously. Um, disparities in the skills of the peer counselors and volunteer chaplains. Improve facilities to ensure private and confidential interaction. Have clear policy framework that guides the work of the chaplaincy. Implement software, um, which is use of technology and use of data to drive intervention and to improve the professionalism of the entity. So again, these are the, the backbone in terms of the, the results, information would have garnered from the, our participants. The results are summarized here. No, a little bit, nothing. It may be because it's not showing up on the Google Drive. Okay. Right. Mm. Or, 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 or I have it here. Let me just, I could just talk you through it. Let me 
should put it on something which again. I just realized I was on mute. I'm trying to get it up there. I'm just opening it in another. I did just hear from Dr. Hurst, he had an emergency. He's gonna to try to join us here in a bit. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay, okay a little fine, but um, you just, yeah, yes, you can, you can, you can, you can go ahead. It's still not coming through. For some reason, when you show it on the PowerPoint, it doesn't show through. So I can show it like this. Let me know what you want, Courtney. Courtney, can you see this? Bill, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. I was okay. just trying to see if Courtney was Courtney was muted. I was okay. I could For some me. reason, on the PowerPoint, when you sh when you view it as a PowerPoint, it takes off some of the images. So I'm uh, just keeping it in this format, and it seems to all show up. So okay. that's that's, that's perfect. That's okay. perfect because I do have a screen before me also to assist me. I'm not okay. seeing clearly. Okay, so this is oh. good. Very good. Okay. Uh, you could next slide, next one. That's that's very much perfect. Okay. All right. So the results summarized. Um, so we have established the research questions, and we will look at the, the summary of the results. Question: What is the relevance, and to what extent, the CSB of the JSF meeting the needs of its clients in the twenty first century? Uh, the CSB provides very relevant services at a high impact of the well-being of the officers. As first responders to crises, they provide rewarding and humbling service. What training strategies and operational systems can be implemented by the CSB of the JCF for it to be revolutionized to have greater relevance in the 21st century? It's plagued with low engagement, lack of proactivity, low resources by being more accessible through online services and secure and confidential offices, trained and certified members can deliver effective services. Three, what changes should be made to the staff and offices of the CSB for of the client? With the existing peer counselors and office space providing above average convenience to its users, training of peer of counselors in intervention techniques and improving the office Offices to support sharing confidential information are necessary. Last, what are the physical and psychological weaknesses of the CSB and how may it be strengthened and restored? Chaplains are expected to provide pastoral care, however, the constitution of the CSB is mixed with counselors and volunteer chaplains. The weakness emerges in the mixed messages that emerge from different approaches to counseling. If I may add also different theological dogma. Next one.
recommendations. Next. The intervention chart below shows a detailed plan outline overview of intervention strategies to be implemented over a five year period. Right, and that is a caption or summary. There are four phases in my five year plan and also four platforms. The first platform is that of partnership. The objective to form partnerships that will better drive implementation and effectiveness of the programs and activities to be introduced. The key personnel, sorry, the key areas of implementation will be consultation, and that will be also internal and external. And the timeline is three months, October to December 2019, after my after I've returned, which I've returned and I've begun that process. And I'll say more on that. Two, the platform is personnel, the objective to ensure that staff members are strengthened and driven. With, while reflecting much of the diversity that is found within the force and are committed to meeting the specific needs of individuals from a variety of backgrounds whenever possible. And the key areas of implementation, the personnel, peer counselors, volunteer chaplains, and of course, assistant chaplains. The timeline, six months, October 2019 to March 2020. Thirdly, the platform, the program, to initiate and execute programs that are undergirded by the philosophy of being proactive and preventative. As you have seen in some of the responses that we need to be more proactive, these programs will be driven by research to ensure that the content is tailor made for the members. In addition, technology will be used to enhance the quality of the services offered. These include, but not limited to data storage, online devotions, and online counseling platform. The gears up for training, confidentiality, training the use of research, and also the use of technology. The phase will be implemented over a period of one year and nine months, commencing March 2020 to December 2021. Phase four plat um, platform is a physical or, or plant infrastructure. The objective to improve infrastructural and technical modernization of the chaplaincy to meet the demands of the 21st century. These include our counseling office, transport, equipment, and there is a vision to do a police chapel. There's a two year projected timeline, December 2021 to December 2023. All right, you may can't see this clearly, but this is known as a Gantt chart that seeks to give a detailed overview of each month, um, each year, the timeline within the month um, of the work plan. So it's not something that is cast pulled from the air. This is going to be a very strategic um, implementation as we go forward in my last phase, which is my implementation, implementation phase. Next. I must announce, and uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm really overwhelmed with this. Um, upon my return, I would have had discussions already with the commissioner. The commissioner is seated to the far left on my screen at the top and negotiation with the assistant commissioner of police in charge of services which is below without the head and my chaplain my supervisor the chief chaplain and out of robust discussions and the sharing of my my results in terms of the limitation that our chaplains do have in terms of mobility i'm happy to say that there has been serious consideration to purchase brand new motor vehicle suvs for all chaplains within the JCF. And I give God thanks for that. And I will certainly keep the, the team at Bakay posted, especially if there's an official and no for that survey, um, for that um, for that event. Thank you again, Bakay, for giving me this opportunity to make such an impact at such early stage. Next. What are my reflections? Transformation. Huh. Deeper knowledge, insight of the chaplaincy and its constituents. Very important. I, I've learned so much in my journey about my work. I have been in this seat going 19, 20 years. This last four years of my journey at Mackey, and I've gotten more information about the chaplaincy than over all the years that I've served. And I thank Mackey for that. Personal development, um, my, manage my time in terms of my own personal development, professional advancement already. There are discussions already in terms of placing me in a very strategic place in light of the research that I've done on the JCF chaplaincy. There's no doubt about spiritual maturity that is given 
Um, one, of, one of the things up back here is that of community change agent, and I'll say more on that. And the value and importance of the role of research um, in organizational transformation and development. Thank you. Next. Lessons learned, how to apply, because this research and findings will have valuable transformational impact on the following government agencies that have military or parliamentary system of governance. Those are exposed to trauma, high stress, and organizations that are demoralized and have mental, spiritual challenges. And three came to mind, and the Jamaica Defense Force, that's our first line of defense in Jamaica, or Jamaica Fire Brigade, um, or fire um, services, and of course, our correctional services of Jamaica. And I believe, as I said before, that there are uh, valuable lessons and valuable information that could be used within these organizations. The response. The readiness, sorry. Next, next one. Next one up. I close, come back, come back up. I'm going to find another screen for If you can go back a little, Doc. One more, right. This has been the surgical platform of my, my research, and it is the wind beneath my wings as I move from the academic journey into that of the fieldwork. And I place emphasis on the fieldwork because Bake is one of transformational um, impact and uh, having gotten this knowledge in terms of my cognitive skills and training i'm now ready to face what lies ahead saint luke 4 verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free I say to God be the glory. And if I'm a, I'm a little cracking up, no emotional, um, Dr. Beer understand where I'm coming from, where I'm today. And um, let us go to the wrap. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. Again, to my wife, to my PLC, to Dr. Mary, and to all those who guided me, and to Bakke for giving this opportunity to serve my country. I want to say, Thank you, and to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Courtney. Appreciate that, even though we have to get through all the technological challenges. I <laughs> know. <laughs> but we thank you for the good work that you're doing, and it sounds like you're already starting to see some results, even in some brand new SUVs. Wow. <laughs> Praise yes, the Lord. Uh, they, 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 were, they were pretty convinced in terms of the, the resounding uh, results of the, the, the data uh, and the limitation that we have. As, as you know, that Jamaica ranks about second or third in the world mm. in terms of murders. Right. Uh, um, so the demand of the police and the support system has to be robust and focused. And I think this research came at a very, very opportune time to open the door for, for, for that sort of support from the government and the high command of the JCF. Mm. Amen. All right. Well, let's go into a time of discussion. Uh, welcome, Dr. Hurst. <laughs> you, know, you had some issues to attend to, and we're glad you were able to join us here. We'll kind of spent some time going through a PowerPoint with, with uh, Courtney, and he's given us some of the uh, highlights of this dissertation process. Uh, just clarify one point for me. One of the points I think you had mentioned at one point was a change of leadership. What exactly were you referring to that in that point? You remember? Well, I believe that response would have come from one of our executives okay. uh, who believed that the a change of leadership within a chaplaincy may be one of the the, the best route uh, that we could go. Uh, I, 
is subjective, I would imagine, but he would have his own opinion. But it has to do with the leadership of the chaplaincy. I see. In terms of, I think, answering the question, what ways to improve the chaplaincy, he believes, or the person believes, that um, there should be a change of leadership. Okay. He didn't make any other uh, extend, he didn't extend on that, just change of leadership. He, okay. The, the, well, if I may add, the, the, the JCF um, is an organization are very subjective, you know, and in the police force, if you really don't really appreciate someone, uh, you tend not to give support to that person. Mm -hmm. um, that's a culture within the JCF, and I believe there's some culture um, clash with our leadership and with some senior officers, and they I believe see. that more more could be done. And in doing more, they believe that the the, the best way is to do is to change that of leadership. I I, I do not necessarily agree. Um, I believe that there are limitations um, that will cause him not to do is best and, mm -hmm. and therefore come I think mid-November there will be a, a conference with all stakeholders within the JCF and uh, I'm hoping once we get a nod that this research at least an abbreviation of research will be shared with the stakeholders mm -hmm. and hopefully that will again provide additional support from from our high command and government. Right okay. Well, others can jump in. What, what, what kind of questions do you have? Uh, what kind of observations would you like to make? Just kind of open yeah. the microphone. Courtney, I have a question as you were talking about the strategic plan and you kind of laid it all out. Um, is there separate strategic plans in place for the force um, that they are working on currently? And what is their willingness to not just kind of work in what you're talking about, but maybe to collaboratively um, work together strategically on a plan? Um, right. I know it's two entities, but just wondering how, Follow you. how that works. Uh, each year we have what is known as a strategic uh, retreat where each head of department... And can you say we... Oh, okay, sorry. I was going to ask you. The within the JCF, right. Yeah, okay. Each department will have that... Um, will attend that strategic retreat to look at plans for, for the year to come. And um, so each department will find its own space to create their, their plans going forward. And that is why the, the need arise for my team in terms of chaplains and peer counselors, to buy into, which my, my chief chaplain would have bought into the, this, these plans. And then these plans are now presented at the, at the higher level. And in, in terms of priorities, then that is how it is um, drafted into the entire JCA plan. So I'm hoping that our presentation will be convincing and for our commission and I command to adopt that and if once that becomes a part of the entire JCA plan, then that's where financial support will come. So this is a platform now for me to be convincing at least to the general body for them to see, you know, but we, we will not be able to do everything, but we'll try and take the critical ones. And as I've said, mobility was one of them, one of the critical ones, which we are seeing some, seeing some hope, real hope that that may be in a positive way. Thank so, you, I, as, as I said, I, I was said, Doc, they, my, my first part of business between October and December, because I resumed duties um, going um, almost a month now, but between October and, and December of 2019, that's where the consultation begins and discussion begins. So, and we hope from that then it will move into the new year for necessary approval. My, my other question was, you talked about the importance of increasing credibility and trust uh, between the chaplains and the, the officers, the law enforcement. I was going to speak a little bit more to that about the barriers to that and how you see this project that you've worked on helping chaplains to increase their credibility and build that 
trust and confidence with officers, especially when you talk about the the article that you showed with the deaths. I'm assuming that has to do with suicide and working conditions. So I wasn't quite sure if that was, you know, stating that there's a suicide issue or just the working conditions for officers. But I know that that confidentiality and trust is so mm -hmm. important. I was wondering if you could just speak to that and what you see really is the way forward in helping mm -hmm. chaplains uh, boost right. their Sure. Yeah, the sense of <laughs> that officers can trust them. So. Okay. All right. Let me first uh, address the whole matter of confidentiality and, and trust. As, as we know, within the counseling context, um, that's like a lifeblood of any therapeutic relationship. Without that, you can't make an impact. What you find is that some of our peer counselors are drawn from the regular policy and who do not possess a necessary skill set or antecedent in terms of understanding that critical uh, ingredient in the counseling process. Uh, and therefore, you'll find over time that persons have shared information with, with our peer counselors and they are told, they, they hear about it afterwards. I mean, confidentiality is broken and broken, even in the reporting and how they report to supervisors. And therefore, training must be a critical milestone going forward in terms of elevating the importance of confidentiality. That can, I ask, once a, can I ask a question so, about that then? Sure. Because there's so much trust, confidentiality that's broken with peer support, does that make officers want to trust chaplains more or does that make them more reticent in trusting chaplains because of that? The, the latter, the latter, because, right, so, so, so again, it, whilst it may not be widespread in all areas, but there have been occurrences, and just one mistake in, in the JCF can, can derail that plan, right, so, so the idea is to really put them back into training, and that's one, and another thing confidentiality too is our plant, our offices, um, you are counting someone and in an open space, someone next door can hear you mm -hmm. and therefore persons do not want to come because they believe that you know so so, so both our both our infrastructure and in terms of the ethics um, in counseling will have to be integrated to mitigate against against that on the question on the the 30 days right it's really poor working conditions um, and long hours the stress of the job um, it was not suicide suicide these are natural causes Right. And you're, you're saying things like heart attacks or fatigue or exhaustion. Okay, which that, can be a direct correct. correlation with working conditions, but not necessarily the hopelessness of suicide. Okay. That's correct. That's okay. correct. That's correct. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Doc. <laughs> um, I tried to get in late. I had a question about the um, SUVs you've received already. No, uh, not, not, not as yet, not, not yet. <laughs> well, the well the get in there, get in there. <laughs> um, in, in what form were you able to share your results that, that resulted in, in such a, I would say, positive demonstration? Good. Uh, what, I, what I did um, since summer of this year, I was in consultation with my, my chaplain, mm -hmm. my supervisor. We... Even though I was on study leave at the time, I was invited to sit with him at the chaplain's conference, at the ICPC conference. And we had some, I had some time to really go through the nuts and bolts in terms of the findings and what persons are saying in terms of the challenges, in terms of reaching to locations, because uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Lester, if, if I've been to Jamaica before. Have you ever been to Jamaica, Dr. Lester? No. I'm not sure. I've flown so it's over a very hilly. <laughs> it, it's a very hilly, a lot of hilly terrain, hilly terrain, yeah. the, the road network, um, especially in what we call the rural areas, um, mm -hmm. very, very, um, in very bad shape. And therefore, to, to have access to homes and, and our visits, it's, it has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. And therefore, out, out of the, the results and meeting with my chief, when I, when I returned, there was a meeting called immediately in terms of um, that concern, because there was 
in view to at least assist probably one or two. But in light of the results, I think this is what now is to outfit all assistant chaplains and chaplains with brand new SUVs um, to take care of that um, concern. Mm -hmm. So I give God thanks for that. And I, and I will send photos once, once that is done. It's, um, it shows the power of good research. That's correct. Sir. Well presented and well documented. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate that. Yeah, Ed, Bill, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Okay, Dr. Lister. Please. Mary? I have, I have another question. I'm wondering, okay, you, what was the biggest challenge you faced in working on this research? What, I'm what, losing it, Dr. Mary. I'm losing Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm losing. Could you, could you go back? Sure. No, I was I'm just asking. Sure no, thank you. Okay. I was asking, in the research, what was the biggest challenge that you faced? Uh, the biggest challenge, police are, are closed creatures. And Dr., you have worked with police, so you, you'll understand. Um, yeah. They, 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 they are suspicious of every and anything. Mm. And I, and I think to really, to garner, to have gotten over 137 persons to participate, that is a big deal because yeah. there, there have been other research and that's one of the problems to penetrate that grouping. Yeah. Um, very close-knitted, um, suspicious of anything that they may say. And so I think to have overcome that hurdle, that, mm -hmm. I, I believe that was one of my biggest challenge. Um, but thankfully, the, the win which was done Obviously, under your guidance, also uh, made it a little easier for me to 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 to, to garner those information. But that I believe one of my greatest challenges that I faced. And I think it's going to be the case for anybody who's trying to collect research in law enforcement mm -hmm. is is yes. that kind of close yes. nature of the culture Spirit. of the law enforcement. That's culture. correct. Yes. That's Thanks that's that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it's, it. Bob. It's a testimony, Courtney, to your ability to inspire trust. Um, obviously, uh, almost immediately, they were, they were able to see that you were a person trustworthy and um, that your plan was a, was a plan that, that maintained confidentiality. Thank you. Courtney, I'd like you just maybe to reflect verbally in terms of how you how you have grown through this project. I think you mentioned you know your personal development as you were reflecting. You mentioned your know, professional advancement, spiritual maturity, uh, your ability to be a community change agent. Maybe you could just reflect on some of those concepts a little bit for us verbally, uh, as you just see you know how you've grown and and. and your role now and how you see your role in the future as a, as a change agent, a transformational agent. Appreciate it, Doc. Thanks for that question. Um, I will have to take it back to my overture in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that that is a flagship uh, venture or program that I believe should be preserved uh, for Bakke uh, because what it did for me is to integrate both the academic and performance in terms of um, bridging that gap between what I've learned and taken into the into the space into the field and that overture really inspired me and set I would say set me ablaze somewhat in terms of, of wanting to get out of the gate like a horse um, <laughs> to to take to, to take the journey uh, uh, the, the research, what it did, caused me to, one, to have a better appreciation of the day-to-day -day life. Because, because as a chaplain, yes, you respond to different crises and you respond to different events, but that was more in a professional garb. What mm -hmm. the research allowed me to do is, is to see them as individuals, see them as brothers, see them in a way where, the, where I'm not seen per se as a chaplain, but someone coming as a researcher to help them 
and and in doing so it really um, broadened my 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 professional knowledge of, of the chaplaincy it, it helped me also in my own spiritual journey because I don't think I've prayed so much over the last year or two. <laughs> uh, it, it, I mean, when, when pressure comes, man, I tell you. And so I drop on God in all areas, all areas. And I think, and I think even for the, the, the result of the SUVs, I think that it was through my, my prayer and, of course, my supervisor standing with me um, through the process. The, I, I believe that they... The common agent is important because again, again the philosophy of Bakke, which I which I, I admire so much, and I'll be a, an evangelist, um, doc, in in spreading this, because too often our universities are limited as it relates to um, head knowledge, academic um, you know development, but as it relates to that of applying the application i think less is done in that regard back here i believe integrate both you have to do well academically and i, and I can testify of that dr mary ensures that so i can testify of that but also there is an emphasis that is often overlooked and that is the transformational approach and therefore that will take into account what i plan to do um, both in my professional ministry and also in my ministry at church. And last but not least, the value and importance and the of research. I, you know, you can't take things for granted. You can't assume, you can't make judgment. Um, let the research speak for itself. And that is what have guided me in, in my, in this thesis, and which I take in my own personal life going forward. Um, that research, research, research. The more, the more you can understand in a scientific and objective way, is the more you are able to plan and to implement uh, your program. So I believe, all in all, I'm I'm a, I'm a brand new person. I'm a brand new person, <laughs> and I and I give credit to the institution and to God for that. Amen. Wow. As I'm looking at your. Uh your Gantt chart there in terms of project management, and I know you, you weren't able to actually implement a whole transformational strategy yet, but you, you've got a fairly detailed uh, process in place. Do you feel fairly confident just in terms of the leadership that you've been able to deal with, that you'll be able to implement some of these uh, changes, uh, improvements as you move forward? In, in, and, and, and you as a Again, as a change agent, you know, what will be your role in trying to uh, move that process forward? Right. Well, they, they much is dependent. Um, Jamaica just recently um, disconnected, or I would say, have released itself from the IMF funding, and um, which I believe that we are in a better place financially because finances, you know, it takes cash to care. Um, you know, so you can have the most grand idea. But without the resources, you can't get it. I think that will be my greatest um, challenge. I am convinced already, in light of my discussions with the, my chief chaplain and senior officers, that the research is one that will be used as a guiding post um, going forward. Um, what needs to be done now is to share, share it with the, the rest of stakeholders and see how best we can prioritize some of the areas as it relates to going forward. But the only thing I can say, Dr. Bill, is that my greatest hurdle uh, will be financial commitment. But mm -hmm. um, having su been successful in getting, uh, hopefully, um, SUVs, brand new SUVs, I think God has really has given me some hope that he, this research is not just a man-made um, creation. I, I strongly believe that God and his timing, um, you know. So I, as a change agent, and what I've learned through Pittsburgh too, that you, you, you can't just take things in reality. As faith person, there must be faith, do my faith. And I think that is what um, I'm going by, my faith. And I do have the facts already, I do have the research. So I leave the rest to the Almighty for his final word. Good. Let me just ask you, you know, one of the issues that we, we like to uh, 
see in a dissertation is you know how you use sources uh, can you just i didn't see it actually in your presentation too much but in terms of what were some of the literature the sources or even the classes uh, you know, this is used those as some of the sources that you've had in your life uh, that have probably influenced you most in terms of this kind of work this kind of research that you've been doing okay i, I might can't name all them but um but firstly the 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 research was driven by my own theological um, framework as it relates to being change agent, as it relates to the, the being a chaplain, uh, as it relates to because of that chaplain, you are really that spiritual chapel that, which, I've, which I've learned from my research, uh, interacting with our, our members. Uh, so, so much of the the work would have come out of my theological um, uh, liter literatures, but but because of the nature of chaplaincy, that you wear two hats, of course, you have to uh, not only provide spiritual care, but you also provide um, psychological care, and therefore some of my sources would have come from the social, um, sociology and psychology um, also, and um, there, there are also, the historical data was important too, uh, in terms of driving understanding what, what has happened before and how best to drive it forward. Um, for the research itself, um, if I may just, just call a few literatures that I would have referenced that helped the law enforcement, sorry, the servant leadership of law enforcement and chaplain, that, that's by Moose Berger and Pattison. Um, the continuing professional education of chaplains of the community practice by Baker. And also a book that was done also by my own professor, Dr. Mary, um, that, that guided me in the process too. Thank you, Doc. And also, but not least, the heartbeat of the community becoming a police chaplain that was done by Baker um, in 2009. So all of those would have come into that mixing pot um, to have given me this, this product. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? questions before we move into an evaluation session let's do that then i'm going to take uh, everyone out of the session except dr glenn dr hurst and myself and then your screen will say something like you're on hold so just okay. stand by for about 15 minutes or so and and then we will bring you all back into the session thank you doc i appreciate it okay Hold on a second. I have to find the right button. I have too many buttons open on my screen right now. <laughs> you can grab a bite to eat, Courtney. Yeah, you could. You could do that. <laughs> All right. Put you on hold. Whoops. Sorry there, Les, I knocked you off for a moment. <laughs> All right. Let's see, let me find the document I'm looking for. Here we go. I'm sorry, I checked out just for a minute or two. I got an alert from, um, are you familiar with uh, Arosha International? Peter no. and Miranda Harris? Oh, yes. They lead creation care. They were just in a traumatic uh, car accident. Miranda oh. was killed, oh, and no. and the CEO of Arosha and Peter's in serious condition. So I just got an alert. So I was I'm a little like shaken. So, anyways, that's what I was why I checked out for a little bit. I got an alert on my, um, mm -hmm. my computer. So oh, so sorry. Keep them in prayer. The yeah, really yeah. Where 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 were they? South Africa. South Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, please, Lord, watch over them, bless them, take care of whatever is needed right now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, well, let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen for a moment. We'll look at this form together. Makes me think of how David Bosch was taken by a car accident. I didn't know that's how he died. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's how he died. Mm -hmm. South Africa too. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Wow. Just a lot of tragedies these days. Yeah. Maybe, you know, because we have access to social media. Yeah, we, we, we know, know more, more about them. Yeah. And we know more people. Um, so our networks are larger, but yeah. Very true. Miranda and Peter were my professors at Regent College, and I just saw uh -huh. them in Pasadena. They were here for our creation care conference. So. Wow. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's work through this, this oil review form. Yes. Uh, can you see the form, by the way? Is that showing yes. up on the screen? All right. It's a little small, but I have it on my computer, so I can just look at it my, my computer. Okay, we just made it a little bigger. Let's see. Yeah, uh, with my glasses, I'm pretty blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need glasses for my glasses, so. I understand, yeah, I understand perfectly, <laughs> yeah. A uh, clear, concise presentation with use of PowerPoint slides. I thought the slides were, were good. You know, of course, we had some technological issues. Uh, we try to hold to a 30-minute maximum. He might have he might have hedged on that a little bit, but I thought he did a fairly decent job there. Any any concerns from from you? No, he did a nice job. Yeah, I agree. I like the Jamaican flag waving in the background. Yeah, right. <laughs> That was the problem with the uh, the ability to show it is right. all the animation uh, mm. was interfering with the visuals. Uh, yeah, yeah. The chart. Got, so I, I was trying to figure that out, and then I realized, oh, the flag's waving. <laughs> yeah, when, when it got translated into Google, uh, I think that created some problems. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I thought he had a, 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 his response to our questions seemed good to me. Mm -hmm. Any problems there from you? No. Mm -mm. Let's just kind of look into the document itself. Uh, well organized, uh, graduate level writing. I, I had no problems there. I thought he did a good job under your guidance, uh, Mary. It's been a process, but I will say even between the draft to the technical reader, wow, I mean, you could just feel it <laughs> come together. So, I mean, I, for me, that's when I noticed such a, this, mm -hmm. yeah. a, a very specific shift that happened. So, yeah. but Since what, what he ended up with, I think is, is powerful and succinct and, and well done. Yeah, he did a good job. My wife, Roxy, is the te technical reader. Right, what, right. What are her and Judy I was both. giving kudos. I was giving kudos to your wife. <laughs> yeah, Roxy and Judy both kind of do technical reading. But and we, we had a problem at first because he did do a little bit of copying. And students do that inadvertently. Uh, both Roxy and Judy are just excellent at picking up when a student has copied something. I'm not good at that. <laughs> but uh, you know, That's a gift. That's really, really good is. to have that eye. And yeah. yeah. And then they go over to, you know, Google Scholar or Google uh, Books and they, they can pick out the quotes right, you know, immediately. Yeah. And so we, we, cautioned, we, we took, brought those to his attention, but he, he seemed to uh, go through and he, and I do commend him. He did go very meticulously, I think, through the technical reader comments and he did yes. address each one uh, very yes. well. Yes. So that was good. He does, he does give attention to detail when it's specific like that. I, I, I've noted. Right. So. Yes. He responded well to everything I, I mentioned to him. Right. Good. And I feel to go along with that, I mean, this is personal for him. This is his work, vocation, his passion, and it's personal for him. He not just cares about, doesn't just care about this as a project. He cares about mm -hmm. the well-being of those that he's serving and serving with and i think that comes through in the attention he gave to the writing of the project mm -hmm. um, i think that really translated for him absolutely yeah i mean this for him is going to be a lifelong document right mm -hmm. um yeah we definitely hope so i mean he's, he's brought together a lot of uh it seems to me useful information for those who are in positions to make decisions. And so at least I think he has, he has this research behind uh, 
you know, what, what he's, the, the improvements he'd like to see. Yeah. I mean, he's given good documentation in terms of uh, the work he did with 137 uh, people in his, in his research. And so I think, and he asked good questions, and I think he was always focusing on the relevancy of the chaplaincy. And so I think he did a good, a good job there. Yeah. I was just kind of looking at the statement, the problem statement here. Uh, if we were to actually, I'm trying to just summarize the problem statement for myself here. Uh, a total overhauling and recruitable assessment of this branch of the JC is needed. Okay, so I think that that's kind of the main issue. He's just mm -hmm. kind of looking for a with an assessment, at least what I heard him say is that a formal assessment had actually not been done on the, on the chaplaincy uh, program. And well, and I think also because he was looking at the uh, difficult working conditions on the officer scene that there needed to be a need to provide increased resources, even without an assessment, there was a realization mm -hmm. that something more needs to happen from the chaplain end of that, 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 that they can do something. Right. Right. Okay. Good. I'm pulling mm -hmm. up his question on his PowerPoint. Okay. Just kind of looking at the research questions here while, well, since I'm on this page, Okay, so to what extent is the chaplaincy service branch of the JCV meeting the needs of the clients in the 21st century? What training strategy and operational systems can be implemented? What type and complement of the staff is, is needed? And to what extent are theological and psychological approaches sufficiently robust to meet the current and future needs? You know, at least from my perspective, he, he's, he did address these uh, within, his, within his research. Uh, like I mentioned, one interesting point, at least was to me, that he felt like that there were, I guess in terms of the, uh, the diversity of the staff, in terms of theology, psychology, <laughs> it looked like, you know, counseling and uh, could often be done from maybe very diverse perspectives and so which is of course going to be happening in any kind of a counseling agency but I, I, it sounds like and it sounds like there's also there's various degrees uh, of uh, training people have you know training in counseling and of course training in counseling that that's my background <laughs> so i i understand that in terms of uh, what, what's going on there uh, but it sounds like to what extent are the theological and psychological approaches sufficiently robust to meet the current and future needs of the JCF. And I guess when he's using the term robust, robust, I think we must just be talking about the need for uh, possibly more in-depth training in, in some, of these, some of these disciplines. I'm just kind of rambling here as I'm looking at his research questions and his problem statement, his purpose statement. What, what are your observations? I think it's significant that that he included the theological in the question. Mm -hmm. um, that pro we probably couldn't do that in the United States. Uh, <laughs> yeah, even in even in a chaplaincy court, right? <laughs> oh, definitely not, because it has to be it has to be interreligious. Yeah. Yes, the, it, and um, it it just reminded me as to how much freer chaplains and people in ministry are in other countries to, to, um, to uh, develop uh, that, that part of um, the preparation. And I, um, I wonder just how, how aware people in the States are that really we have, in our secularization, we've gone way beyond um, and left behind, thank the Lord, um, many of the countries where, where, where your faith and your and your practice are still, you know, part of the same thing. Mm. Uh, I mean, I was surprised in Jamaica he was able to do that, but not not surprised in another way because uh, because they they just have a a whole different approach in in the islands down there to to their faith. Yeah, at least when I talk with various students, 
Christianity is still seen as the predominant force <laughs> in Jamaica. I mean, it's it's even written into some of their constitutional. Right. Uh, well, it's the reason documents. why they have chaplains. Exactly. Right. So why would they have chaplains if that's if you know? I, I don't think the the voodoo people would would be too interested in the chaplaincy. So it's it's not it's not that branch of religion that is uh, <laughs> driving this. Right. Right. Okay, uh, Okay. I was just looking at the intervention strategy here. Yeah, I've included um, short, medium, and long-term uh, goals. Uh, basically, I think that in terms of the intervention. I mean, I he has a very specific strategy plan. Yes. Um, you know, he really sought through the strategy. I think the question is gonna be, and it sounds like there's openness um, I, for me, a strategy plan will only be effective if the entity that you're working for is not just cooperative, but collaborative. So mm -hmm. that for me is going to be the, um, the variable in this. Well, that, that's why the sign of the um, promise of SUVs was so hopeful. That it, is, it yeah. It looks like the, he has collaboration almost before he, um, he actually launches the plan. At least they're listening. They they're they're paying attention, which I think is huge. Yeah, in my that, that's a very tangible <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. result that he can kind of hang on to. This you know, there is hope for for change. Well, if they're willing to do that. Go ahead. Where finances are, I mean, this isn't like you know people living high on the hog. I mean, finance right. mean a lot here, and to put SUVs into something that's oh, that's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a pretty, um, <laughs> that's pretty a, gener gener a generous <laughs> offer. Yeah, right, right. Might even I be never, I never had an SUV as you know, I work for the district attorney's office now. So, right. um, you know, it's very different my calls. But when I was at a local agency for 17 years, we never had SUVs. We always <laughs> go because Monrovia Police Department, they had one SUV that they shared between them. Yeah, and we always ask them, what did you do to get an SUV? Right. Like, <laughs> not just a vehicle, but a, like an SUV. SUV. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it would better be termed extravagant demonstration of collaboration. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a Cadillac, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, he must have been blown away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he was. Yeah. yeah. And such a tangible response to a request, you know, talking about it being hilly and difficult to get to. And that's such a tangible response. Right. Yeah, it really is. And I, I think to what was said earlier, I think it does give, um, it really points to the trust that Courtney has earned and his leadership and the humility and the the influence that he has i really that i think it really speaks to his character and and the years that he's put in to his service there so. mm -hmm. i i met him in pittsburgh last year and i was i was very impressed mm -hmm. at his demeanor and at, at his humility yeah um it was um it was, it was one of the high points of my um of my couple of days there at pittsburgh at the overture yeah, I was kind of moving to the uh, the next part of the form, which talks about the the biblical foundations are re relevant to the purpose of the project. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think he did a good job. He was, of course, using the Luke four passage, which he ended his presentation on the Spirit of the mm -hmm. Lord is upon me, and I kind of I think he was kind of seeing that as <clears throat> it's kind of a, a scriptural verse for his own life and his own ministry yeah. right now. Uh, as, as he was ministering to the various uh, sectors of the community yeah. that he's working in. One of the, and of course, this is just kind of a, a personal issue that we're kind of going through right now at BGU. I noticed that Courtney, he's given kind of an exegetical, uh, you know, treatise on, on the scripture. Mm -hmm. He looks at the author, he, who's the audience to be addressed. Which is kind of what we always were looking for. We've been wrestling with that as we've kind of been going through some of our our transformation, quote unquote, on the on the on our dissertations. Mm -hmm. 
right now we've kind of incorporated the the theological section into the literature review and so some students are not really uh, feeling the need to do maybe the in-depth kind of exegetical work that some of us who you know have been accustomed to that process and I, I don't I don't know if that's good or bad you know it's uh, I think we've, we've kind of got some debate on that issue right now but in terms of Courtney's I, I feel like he did go through that process mm -hmm. uh, he went through the historical cultural backgrounds of that scripture you know and he's taken it all the way down to the application I'm sure to to his particular situation and uh, so that was good. Any comments you, you both have on that issue? I think this is just where I see his passion and his calling impacting the project. I think, again, this is the personal piece. Mm -hmm. It's not just a theological thread for the dissertation. It's, as you noted, the theological thread for you know, his life and, and for his calling. So um, again, I feel like there's just a lot of embodiment of what he is calling other chaplains to. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Well, I think in terms of the fact that it's a, it is a, a more spiritual kind of a ministry than, you know, some other kinds of social ministries, uh, that that was um, pretty important and he did a good job on it. Right. Yeah, and that, that was my. I mean, he he will basically be the spiritual leader of all those chaplains, mm -hmm. right? So you know, he has to he has to know his stuff, mm -hmm. right? And he has to live it. He has to embody mm -hmm. it. It's not. And I think he that's where he, I feel like it's so key in his work. He can't just speak it or teach it. He has to live it and embody it, right? And that's where the credibility of chaplaincy comes through, right? Good. And that's why his humility is so important and his ability to, to garner trust rapidly. Yeah. Uh, in, in the, within the last recent year or two, we've, we've started trying to ask students to you know, identify their theoretical framework. Uh, and, I, and I think he's, you know, he's basically, I was just kind of looking to see how he started his literature review you know, the transformational leadership model was used as a conceptual framework and the lens to approach the literature review. It talks about the three topics, you know, spiritual approaches to chaplaincy, transformational models and effectiveness of the program, contemporary training of the, of the chaplain. And so I, I think he's, yeah, he's just basically saying the transformational leadership model is his, is his transfer, is, is his, is his framework, which I have no problem with that, but that, that, would, that would meet the requirement from my perspective. Let me just ask you, Mary, as you've been over there at Fuller for some time. Sure. Has, has the institution there wrestled with the whole issue of theoretical framework and how that applies to a, to a dissertation process? In, in what way? Can you? Well, you know, when you went through your BGU uh, work here, I doubt that you even worked with that concept in relationship to the dissertation. That is correct. Okay. And I was wondering, say, if you're at Fuller, well, is, that a, is that a predominant piece as they look at the, the theory that are being applied in a dissertation? Yeah, and I think the opposite problem is for Fuller is I think where – uh, they struggle with this, the transformational piece okay. and the embodied piece. Okay. Um, not so much in the School of Intercultural Studies. There, there's a little bit more of marrying of the two. Right. But yeah, definitely that's a little bit like night and day with BGU and Fuller. Okay. <laughs> All right. So they're probably going to be working on the transformational side where we're working on some of the research methodology yeah. side. And, and hopefully well, we we'll... hope so. We hope yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, that's sort of interesting, Mary. Fuller used to be so pragmatic. Yeah, really. <laughs> Again, I think the School of Intercultural <laughs> Studies is the one that does bring that piece. But, yeah. Hmm. We're going through all kinds of changes though right now. You know, we just made the announcement yesterday. We're not moving to Pomona, so we're staying. And now we're kind of redesigning oh. and rethinking everything. So we could be a totally different Fuller in a couple of years and how we approach doctoral work and research. So who right. knows? 
I stopped okay. asking. Good. I just teach there. That's all I do. Right. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I did ask him there, I want to ask him that one question. Uh, the project included relevant reference lists with good representation of sources uh, generated within the student's cultural context. He did bring in at least quite a few sources, I think, from his own chaplaincy uh -huh. uh, environment, which was good. And I think that, that would meet that requirement. And uh, of course, he appreciated your, your, your book, uh, your work, Mary. And he did mention some others as I asked him that question. It just didn't come up in the presentation was the, the right. reason I asked him that. Right. I, I think he adequately addressed that. He's in a unique spot, not just because of the religious cultural context that he's in, but even the government form and the influence of, of non-Western, but non-US uh, North American. And so there's an interesting, it's an interesting makeup when it, it comes to like the books that he's gonna use because right. even my sourcing, there are things that will cross over like in the area of, of clergy confidentiality, but then there's other things that don't translate. Mm -hmm. And so I think in a lot of ways, he needs to develop a lot of those resources. That right. Are his. Right. So maybe in a group that they collaborate and they come up with some articles and training materials, and maybe even write a couple of resource books together. There you go, right? Yeah, no, that'd be great. In his spare time. In his spare time, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's see, uh, research method and data gathering strategies are defined with appropriate rationale. I, I thought he, again, did a good job in terms of his, his strategies, his next methodology and uh, the use of surveys and uh, focus groups and uh, uh, some in one on ones. And I thought he had a good, at least from what I saw, it looked like a, a good, uh, good representation of that, that content within, within the uh, research chapters. Mm -hmm. And pretty substantial numbers. I mean, I do have to say um, it is hard to get law enforcement to participate in any kind of research. And to get yeah. the numbers that he <laughs> did for this project is so impressive. So I do think that needs to be noted. Absolutely. It's not an easy task. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I, you know, I remember when I was doing my research, every officer asked me, where are you going to publish it? Why do you want it? Right. Yep. What's your angle? <laughs> so, <laughs> no angle, just trying to learn. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I just put that note for myself. I'll just add some of these things as we get in there. Okay. Uh, results of the research clearly displayed, yes. Transformation strategy is relevant, yes. I think, he, I think we've already mentioned, yeah, I, I think he has a good, he has a good transformational process that he has outlined fairly well in detail, has a, a pretty good project management chart there that, uh, with, with timelines, et cetera. Uh, you know, did transformation occur as the a result of the project? I, I think a lot of, re he brought, he's, he's bringing a lot of, a lot of awareness, I think, at least to some of the, the folks that he's been able to talk to. And of course, then his own transformation, like you said, just becoming more aware of the day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. of, of the people that he works with. It was very, it was very helpful to him. So I don't know, what do you want to say about has transformation actually occurred as a direct result of the Well, project? it's definitely started. The promise yeah. of the SUVs is, it shows that, that That's he's- true. Yeah. He's made a major advance already <laughs> in getting the um, collaboration of the police department. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I definitely, there's potential for future transformation. Conclusions, implementations, uh, ongoing effective communication strategies. In terms of his discussion, uh, let me just look at that one second. If we go down to the discussion chapter.
okay. future possibilities, focus groups, etc. Yeah, one of the emphasis, one one item, and I don't don't know if I see it here or not. But in one faculty meeting, we were talking about in the the issue of communication strategies, and, and so therefore we actually entered it into the, uh, the conclusion chapter. I'm not sure if it was in the template that that Courtney worked with, but we asked students, you know, as part of their reflection in their discussion chapter, to reflect. Of course, you know, they're going to reflect on you know how well the how well the uh, project uh, met the goals, uh, answered the research questions, uh, what did they learn, et cetera. But one area also is what did they learn about communication strategies? Mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if he was able to actually, you know, talk about that, but th that's an issue that I think is fairly significant uh, for students as they're learning how to collaborate, uh, how to facilitate, uh, as they as they learn, you know, what kinds of communication strategies work, what kind of communication strategies don't work within their particular context. Okay, that, that's an important issue to uh, just kind of talk, think through with our students. Well, you, you talked a lot about being a change agent. Okay. Right. Communications is a, a large part of, of that role. Right. But he did, I think he did, he did good, do good, good summary, I think, in his discussion chapter is he, he went through all the various uh, themes that had come, come forth from his interviews and, and, and he, I think he did a good job of bringing that together and he brought, brought a good job of, in terms of what the future would, might look like uh, mm -hmm. based on uh, the research he's done. So yeah, I'll just put a yes there. Uh, the, no problem here. This, the project is thoroughly mm -hmm. embedded in the student's uh, context. Is there a realistic action plan? Yeah, definitely. We do have, we saw a very detailed action plan. Uh, it shows a, a replicable model. I, I think, at least in terms of the detail that he's put in his Gantt chart and other places, I think that that's, that's no problem. I think the challenge of a replicable model is always you know, law enforcement is just so unique in so many yeah. different regions. And so right. I think there's, there's enough things that can be taken from this. I, I, people can tailor it, but. I think especially in like British colonies, exactly. island, island British colonies, I think, um, I think you probably can reproduce it. Agreed, absolutely. And there's enough of those. Yeah, but I think, it, yeah. Yeah, you're right. But um, in in any of the um, the non-Western um, non-Western small nations, I think his research will be helpful to any anyone who's in in that role mm -hmm. and tries to improve the chaplaincy. Yes, absolutely. I mean, in person, go ahead. It's a what a grand thing to to see that that Becky's having an opportunity to transform uh, the, the chaplaincy of a whole nation. Mm. You know? Yeah. How, how many universities can look to their, their, their um, students and say, well, through their students, they are transforming you know, large uh, geopolitical yeah. places. Yeah. But you got the government to buy you SUVs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, and, and I'm reminded of this, this other one I'm, I'm, I'm doing also, Bill. With, he's, he's trying to reduce teenage pregnancy in the whole country of Guyana. In wow. Guyana, that's right. Yeah. And you think, wow, you know, that is, that is such a tremendous impact that BGU is having around the world. Yeah. I, I'm just new, of course, and oh, yeah. really well, overwhelmed by, by the kind of students that, that, that Becky gets. Yeah, I just, I, I was giving a report at a director's meeting or an academic cabinet or some ways, and I, and I just, I think I just listed 10 dis recent dissertations, and it, and, I, and it was just amazing. Each was doing the kind of transformational work. You know, you just mentioned, you know, pregnancies in Guyana. Uh, another lady is working on uh, uh, transformation, transformation through uh, Myanmar mothers. <laughs> Uh, you know, work in uh, political systems in Nigeria. Uh, mm -hmm. 
in Jamaica, and, and Jamaica has just really come to the forefront in our student body over the last couple of years. And, and then we're just seeing just, just a lot of amazing things being done. You know, uh, the infrastructures of companies being changed in terms of transformational leadership. You know, we have a guy that works in a, a natural gas company and he's, you know, taken some of the transformational uh, perspectives and has been able to uh, introduce those within the, the leadership of that natural gas company in Jamaica. It just, just amazes to me when I, when I think mm -hmm. about the kind of work that, that gets done through some of these dissertation processes. All right, well, I'm ready to just give it a good grade here. I mean, I'm obviously going to give them a pass. You, you, you guys want to do anything different than that? No, no, it's, it's excellent. Yeah, I, I think so too. What do you want to say in terms of comments? I think um, for me, one of the most important things is to affirm how he is embodying the essence of this dissertation. Um, like, I feel like it's important to affirm his calling mm -hmm. and, you know, his formation, how God has made him and shaped him and called him, and that this is a testimony to that. Right. So I feel like that's, that, that's one of the things I really want to say, because I feel like this really comes out of that formation for him. Right. And also his, his diligence in, in, as you said, Mary, the number of, of um, people he was able to survey, the number of policemen he was able to, um, he could have gotten away with a whole lot less and probably would, would have been acceptable. Uh, yep. And I think something needs to be said about his character to kind of go along with that. He, I think he operated from a place of his personhood of just being a person of integrity. Mm -hmm. And I think applied that integrity to the work. Um, again, everything to him was important. So there was a, a high level of responsibility and integrity. Um, even as he was learning the process, you know, as he came in, he didn't really know how to do this, but there was a sense, I want to get this right. Um, I want to take seriously this responsibility. And I think that really came through in the final. And knowing how detailed, detailed the notes were from your wife, Bill, yeah. I am impressed that you went through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> No, I think that the final challenge to all those dissertations is the technical report. <laughs> right. and, and that's the truth. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a whole dissertation none of process. That are very good at, at all the little details. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say in terms of the comments? Uh, just to make sure that he takes a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I don't think he has. <laughs> yeah, okay. But doesn't he have to go back to work? Right he away? already started back a month ago. Yeah, so. So I think maybe, you know, maybe an encouragement, but also uh, a recommendation is self-care is so key for officers, and it's also paramount for chaplains, so. We well, want they, have to, to, they have to lead the way in that regard. That's right. We want to support his self-care, so. Was that his wife on the line, too? I, I don't know. Was that his wife? I'm not sure. She said that she was going to come on, but I didn't know, because I, I didn't know all the people who were on the call. Uh -huh. Was she the one helping him set up the computer? I think so. That's what I was thinking. All right. I think we're ready to uh, bring Courtney back in. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take this off the screen. I'll stop sharing. Okay. Let me get everybody back in here. 
So I've noticed post-it notes on your bookshelf. Is that all the books that you uh, are reading at the time or? <laughs> no, I, I finally um, organized my books better. Oh, okay. <laughs> those, those are the categories and we're, we're about to put labels on the shelves. Okay. I thought if it was all the books you were reading at the time, I would be overwhelmed. <laughs> no, I, I do have a pile, but it's not quite that. Okay, that's <laughs> All right. I think you've, you're all back with us. Courtney, you're there? Turn on your microphone, Courtney. Can you hear us, Courtney? Yes. Okay. Yes, right. I can right. hear. The, the well, Courtney, can hear. We, we want to, first of all, just tell you we are just so uh, enthusiastic about the work that you've done and that you continue to do and, and your passion <laughs> that you've exhibited in your work. Uh, we, we just really commend you on, on that, and we just thank you. Thank you. I do want to just take take the uh, take any stress away. We are going to now be able to address you as Doctor Faulkner. Okay, so you have to have stress. <laughs> and as you, Courtney, as you affectionately call all of us, we'll call you Doc. Doc. Oh Doc. God. <laughs> Doc Courtney. Right. Oh God. <laughs> Oh God! Oh you God. made it. You did it. <laughs> oh God! Not, boy, this, this is like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Ooh. Well, it's well earned and well deserved, Courtney. I think thank all of you. us are um, impressed with your perseverance and your character Amen. and your integrity and Amen. your passion. This is thank what you. you have been called to and this is what you embody mm -hmm. and you have um really i think paved the way for other chaplains and for the the chaplain organization that you're a part of i just feel like you're gonna you are a agent and you will continue to be an agent of God's transformation there mm -hmm. thank, thank you doctor i pre appreciate dr mary thank you Thank you, and I appreciate your support, your guidance, your will. And um, as I've said before, I believe God has started a work, and uh, I, I will definitely keep all of you posted on the results because I think that is the hallmark of Baki to, to, to transform lives, and that is what I, I intend to do by God's help. Mm. But we Amen. do, you know, one of the things I think that we did note is that you. Um, you have so much integrity and character in who you are. And I think even the fact that you were able to be, you know, granted these SUVs, I think is a testament to just your character, your integrity, what you embody in this. You live this. This isn't something you talk about. This isn't something you're telling others to do. This is something that you live. And you believe in and you're committed to these officers. And we just wanted to acknowledge that. That's so powerful in your credibility who you are. So, and who God's called you to be. And it was, it was a special joy. Thank you, Dr. Beering. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It was a special joy for me, Courtney, to get to know you a bit in Pittsburgh. And... Uh, and to um, thank you. Yes, it it was it was. See that one year later, the the Lord has brought you through, mm -hmm. and um, to see mm -hmm. that uh, He's done it in a way that was um, so substantial in your own development. I think that's that's important. Thank you, Doctor Lester. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate your own guidance too. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mm. Uh, just pardon me. I, I'm still. I, I'm not. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm here or not. <laughs> well, Courtney, when you work it, it's on a lot. when you work on something for so long and then it comes to an end, I mean, mm -hmm. this isn't the end for you, but this is a marker. I, I think it is hard to take in. Mm -hmm. So, amen. Yes, Courtney, is, it is. It is. It is. Is your is your wife online with us right now? No, I'm I'm trying to reach her, but I'm not getting. Uh, did you get her? She's she's on. She's she. she, she I'm not seeing her. Hey, Courtney, uh, it, it uh, didn't really, when when this happened to me. It didn't really hit me until my mother-in-law. Aww. Made that for oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> you need one of those, Courtney. You need one of right. those. Okay. 
doctor. Yeah. Well, I just, I wanted to commend your wife and any of your family members because sometimes just going through a doctoral program is, is just very challenging right. <laughs> for I'm, the I'm, whole family in terms of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get her. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, she's on. She's on. She's on. Can you hear Nadine? Did you hear? I'm hearing the conversation. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. That's what okay, I know you're good. Good. All right. Well, again, we just want to thank you for so much for your your support of Courtney and, and as he's come through this process. And like I said, it, it's always a challenge <laughs> for time, its commitments, etc., for the family. And we just so much uh, commend you for, for being able to go through him with that process. So thank you. Amen. Thank you, Doc. Well, Courtney, you. I'm just going to summarize what we put in comments. We put all positive comments. You know, your dissertation demonstrates your life passion uh, to your work uh, for the Lord uh, there in your chaplaincy. We really commend you on your ability to collect data within a police force uh, environment where its suspicions are high. <laughs> we commend you mm -hmm. for your just great integrity. You just always showed a desire to uh, improve the excellence of your work. You responded well to our comments and to our, to our recommendations. Uh, also, uh, we just really saw your, your own strong empathy for your colleagues, especially as you said, you, you got to know their day-to-day -day work even better, which gives you even a stronger ability to identify with them and to, uh, you know, walk alongside uh, in whatever ways the Lord would, would allow you to do that. And then finally, we just asked you to make sure you pay attention to your own self-care, <laughs> your yes. own rest, recreation, <laughs> vacation, etc. We all know how important those uh, those are uh, when we get into uh, you know, the day-to-day -day grind of the kind of work that the Lord calls us to. So we would Good. just uh, commend you, but also be sure that, that that is a part of your life. Okay. Thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. Amen. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that I think we're going to close. Uh, Dr. Glenn, would you uh, lead us in prayer for Courtney? Absolutely. Well, Father, we rejoice in this day that has come. Lord, we thank you for Courtney and for all of his hard work that he has mm. for this dissertation process and research. And we rejoice in the fact that we can now call him Dr. Courtney. Yes, and Lord, yes. that this is a, a next season of life and vocation that you've called him into. We pray, Father, your blessing upon this dissertation, Lord, not just the research and the work, but Father, all that it holds for the future, God, the mm. strategy, the plans, the hopes, the prayers. We ask for your, your favor to be upon these things that are written in this dissertation, that you would bring them to fruition. Yes. We pray that you would continue to guide Courtney, um, that you would give him wisdom, that you would give him new strategies, that you would continue to give him favor with the leadership. Mm -hmm. And I pray, God, that you would use him in, in other contexts to encourage chaplains to be able to not just serve those in law enforcement, but also to be a part of the strategy so that they can move to a place of, of well-being and wholeness for their officers, Lord, because that's what we long for is to see them live long lives that are um, marked by, by wellness and mm -hmm. your peace, your shalom. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Father, for the text in scripture that you've given to Courtney and the calling mm -hmm. that you've placed upon his life. Lord, I pray that you would continue to um, open those doors for him to live this out in new places, God, that you would continue to go before him and that you would bless all the places that he walks into, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this mantle that you've placed upon his life. Um, God, we pray that today and the days to come, there will be much celebration for this well-earned doctorate mm -hmm. in ministry, Lord, and leadership. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for what he has given to the chaplain community, the law enforcement community, mm -hmm. and to the, the Christian community and the community at large, Lord. Pray that you'd continue to bless him and his family, the work of his hands, and the work of his heart. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for his life, and we pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You Dr. Amen. Courtney. <laughs> oh God. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take it in. I'm trying to take it in. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. It'll take a while. 
Amen. Yes, congratulations. Right. Thank you. Thank you all. Bill and Lester, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. all right. I really appreciate yeah. it. And you have I'm to have a party now, Dr. Courtney. Dr. Mary. <laughs> You're right. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you both go celebrate. So I got biased. Uh, right. Do Dr. Judy will be in touch with you in terms of how to get the dissertation uh, okay. final version, etc., and you know, getting it uh, bound and all those uh, technical issues. Okay. So she will be in touch with you on that, okay. Courtney. Again, been great to work okay. with you. I appreciate that. Thank and you. We very just much. appreciate. It. All right. Congratulations. Gonna... God bless you. Bye. Bye. Bless bye. You. Okay. Bye. Bye. Gracias.